no matter what kind of negotiation you're dealing with, you've got to understand what are the underlying needs, wants, drivers. It's very rarely about the surface level request. You know, kidnappers would come on and go, I want a million dollars for AJ. Mm, okay, well, I know you're not going to get a million dollars for AJ because the family or the company can't pay that or won't pay it. But ultimately, I know really that you as the kidnappers, you want to be able to save face, to appear in control, to be able to walk away feelings if you've actually got something from this deal. That's the same in a business right. or in your personal life. If it's, do you know what, I'm right, you're wrong, and I'm going to prove that, and I'm going to dig my heels in, and heaven knows the world is getting more and more polarized with that kind of approach. And so if I can sit there thinking, okay, how can I help you walk away with what you feel is a good deal without me acquiescing, condoning, giving in, and me feeling I've got to give over more than what I'm happy to, then, you know, that that's where we want to end up, where both sides can walk away feeling they've got something that is... So in that situation, what is a, a good outcome? Like, what are you shooting for outcome-wise? Obviously, the person coming back safely who's been kidnapped, but... I, well, the thing is, we, what we don't want to do is say there's a million, say you say you get taken and there's a million dollar demand. I don't know if that's cheap or not for okay. you, but let's, uh, let's yeah, say inflation. A million, inflation, might be. okay, there's a million dollar demand. And your family go, okay, we've managed to, we've got a bit of savings, we've managed to clear out the account, we've sold our car really quickly and whatever. And yeah, we, we could probably get $900,000 million within a few days. If, if we pay the kidnappers that, what kind of message do you think that is going to send? Oh, they got to kidnap again. That's a great payday. Hey, this is a cash cow. We need a milk uh, forevermore. Yeah. It's too easy, too quick to pay. And again, there's no different in, in, in any of the kind of negotiation. If you feel like you've left money on the table or there is still money left on the table, you're going to hold out for more. Right. And so what we want to do is we call it squeezing the orange. We want to make it appear that there is no more money left. And the way we do that, again, this is applicable to everyday life. Communicating, communication in general is do not be afraid of conflict. Embrace, embrace risk, embrace conflict in, in a conversation, in communication, negotiation. And remember, a negotiation is simply a conversation with a purpose, all right? And people will shy away from having those difficult conversations. And we all know, you know that phone call you know you need to Should make making, yeah. and you keep putting it off or you're in that relationship and you know you need to have that conversation, but you find a reason why you shouldn't. shouldn't. Yeah. Um, and so what we do with the kidnappers is very early on is, okay, there's a million dollar demand for you, but we've only got 100,000. Mm. Do you think the kidnappers are going to go, hey, that's fine. I'll okay, Yeah, we, 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 we overreached there. We get that. Yeah, pay the 100,000. We'll take... No, they're going to they're gonna bitch and moan and whine and make threats and, you know, mock executions and they'll go silent for days, weeks on, on end. But I want that conflict. I want that management of expectations early on. It's the same in business. Mm -hmm. If you know full well that you're never going to agree to what the other side is demanding, you've got to have that conversation early, get it out of the way, so then you can get into the real, meet the real, the proper negotiation, which it. is right. What we're going to do, you ask for a million, but we'll give you, I don't know, I can say 50, 60,000. They're not going to be happy bunnies. No. But straight away, I've set the expectations of where this is going to go. And people go, well, actually, let's just pay more money quickly and we can get the people back. But counterintuitively, if we can hold out, if we can embrace that initial conflict, and that doesn't mean we have to be rude or unpleasant or unprofessional. You can still have a smile and speak calmly and kindly to people and still say no. no. And we get to a point where we now enter a rhythm of a negotiation where you know, we'll, we'll, they'll come down, we'll come up slightly, and then eventually we'll meet at a point 
where we knew we were going to meet anyway. And it's almost like if you've got a graph and, you know, on the one axis it's coming down, the demand's coming down, and then our, um, our, our increase offers is coming up and then it will peter out and there'll be a really tiny gap between the demands and the offers for quite a while. But the danger there, especially if a few weeks have gone by now, and obviously the families are very emotional, they want their loved ones yeah. back, they go... The, there's only 20,000 in it. The kidnappers are saying, if you pay another 20,000 more, you can have them back. But if we suddenly, we've been holding out increases of five or seven, and then all of a sudden we'll go, oh, okay, yeah, here's another 20,000. Yeah. They're going to go. Well, there's more to be made. Oh, actually, and then you, you have to reset and you go, go back to the beginning again. So it's holding your nerve in those conversations. Know what your outcome is and hold your nerve. And um, yeah, expect to bump your ride as well.